Thank you, Tony. Um, you know, obviously it was extremely important for us to, to come away with a victory today. Um, it's, as it's been well documented all week, it was extremely important for us to play well uh, for Leanne, for Coach John Slarman, his family, uh, his kids, and uh, was really proud of the team to, to get this victory. Uh, it wasn't easy. It was uh, an emotional week. Um, it's very different times for everybody. And then um, we've uh, been hit with a few, few curveballs throughout this year and certainly um, um, very discouraging news this week with the passing of John. So uh, there was no getting around it, um, that that was important to me and it was important to our team to win for them and to honor John and the man uh, that he was and uh, to continue his legacy. And I felt like our team came out and we played uh, very good football. Um, Bandy has been uh, much more efficient in moving the ball offensively um, and they did a very good job, you know, certainly late. I felt like, um, with playing in this league and the competitive games that we're in, when we were up, I believe it was 17, I felt like it was really important to get Bo in the game. And instead of going into our normal ground and pound, and you know, we felt like we probably could have done that, obviously to play you know, series before we ripped off a big run and we're getting physical and starting to run, I just felt like it was important for our program, important to get Bo some reps and throw the ball around a little bit. Uh, we're not in that opportunity too many times. Certainly, I didn't want to get it that t that close, and um, you know, probably would have been crucified had they gotten that onside kick and, and come back. But again, I want to continue to push the forward, uh, push the program forward. Um, so I did feel like uh, the game was in in control. Um, I I would have liked uh, for our backups on defense to play a little better late in that game. Um, and for us to have to go back and, and put some starters back in and to try to preserve the victory, um, you know, wasn't real pleased with the end in, in particular defensively. Uh, but again, I felt like it was important just to get guys snaps and to throw the football and not just go in to kill the clock and, and ground and pound. If we would have done that, I felt like, you know, obviously we could have, uh, you know, probably cut into that, uh, you know, the way they come back there at the end, we could have um, killed some more clock. So, um, you know, part of that's on me, but again, in the long run, we're getting the victory and getting Bo some snaps, and then of course getting Joey some snaps. It was important. Hey, we'll throw it over to questions first, John Hale. Hey, Mark, can you just walk us through the the tribute on the opening play? How you all came up with that, and, and just kind of how that developed? Um, yeah, I'm really not sure. Uh, Mitch is in here, and Mark Hill. Um, and Dan Breswitz, so the guys just came up with it and mentioned it to me early in the week and, and or, or, you know, throughout this week. And um, I thought it was a great idea. And, um, and the, the, the O-line had been trading off 65 and Landon was wearing it today. So, um, you know, somebody in the staff here came up with the idea. And, of course, we all uh, thought it was a great idea. And, and you know, I, I have a great respect for, for Derek Mason and I. And, uh, and, uh, you know, I should have said that in my opening statement, um, you know, the respect I have for him and the way he coaches as well. But he immediately said, oh, coach, I'm, I'm de I'll decline that, you know, and uh, he didn't have to. Uh, but I also want to compliment him on his team. You know, he had quite a few opt outs. He's got guys hurt. He's down very low. Uh, it would be very easy for them to say they're under the threshold and not play. And they continue to coach very well and scrap and play. And you have to compliment Derek for that and, and his staff because that team plays hard and we knew they would. Um, but anyway, getting back to the question, I thought it was a good idea by somebody in our staff. I'm not sure who could get credit for that. Um, I certainly was on board with it right away and it was great to honor him that way. Yes, Mark, kind of following up with that, kind of what was your message to the team going out before the game in such an unusual situation like this? Was it kind of what did you share with them? Yeah, it was it was different. Um, you know, certainly uh, there was a lot of conversation that I'd like to keep in the locker room. A lot of that's personal. Uh, but the bottom you know, line is is to honor John by by playing the way he you know coached the way he lived his life and you know we constantly talked about the tenacity that, that he had the toughness that he had but also when he was a player he was extremely technical and um, very detailed and so we knew we would be 
emotional, but I also really wanted to execute. And really, I felt like offensively, we really played a, a pretty sharp and, and did, you know, had uh, 460 yards on only 55 plays. So um, we're very explosive and efficient offensively. Uh, had we played a little better defensively, I really thought we could have done, you know, kept on getting some points on there and, and uh, it would have been a much uh, greater margin uh, for, for the victory. But uh, it really, you know, that was a big part of it, you know, for John, just to honor him and, and uh, you know, wanted to make sure that Leanne and their, their kids had a game ball with a dub. You want it. We didn't want to give them a game ball with a loss. And it's uh, important for us uh, to, to, to bring that to them and to do that for them. Hey, Mark. Uh, Terry was very efficient today, and, and, and especially hitting those, uh, you know, those touchdowns to cross the middle there to, to the tight end. Well, I think one of them was crossing the middle. I think one of them was maybe in the corner. But those guys, just how important was it to get those guys involved and Terry comfortable, you know, going back out there after being off a few weeks? I thought it was very important just in general offensively. I felt like we were very efficient today throwing the ball. And I felt like we could have been even more efficient. Again, I, I put that on, on, on the defense. You know, I feel like, you know, if we didn't let them possess the ball the entire second half, you know, we could have got a lot more opportunities and, and, uh, and you know, kept on throwing it around a little bit. And we're very efficient in keeping people off balance and we're going to need that moving forward. Mark, uh, talking about the defense, I know you won't see, you won't know for sure till you look at the video. But anything in particular stick out there, stick out to you there? It, it it just seemed like to me that it was one of those games where they wanted everybody else to make the play, not them. You know, that's just how I felt. I don't know. We'll see. I'm sure there's some guys that played uh, very hard, but to me, we were just out there oozing. Just, just lining up, expecting somebody to make a call for him to stop somebody instead of making plays and, and trying to stop people. What that was evident, you know, we did, we made very few competitive plays. John Hill. Mark, 308 rushing yards, no sacks allowed. I'm not sure Chris was even touched on that 74-yard yard touchdown. What does it say about your offensive line? The way they played today, given everything they've gone through this week. Yeah, in in being down Luke and being down Kenneth as well, you know. So we had backup stepping in and really playing well. I, I I know it was important to those guys to play well. There there was no doubt in my mind. It was important to all of us, uh, but certainly that group. It's personal, and um, they wanted to to honor John and to play a very tough physical game, like the way Coach Slarman lived, and uh, they did that. Hey, Mark, you had both your punter and your kicker out, and yet Chance comes in, and he's perfect, and Colin did a great job. When did they know they were getting the start? Can you just talk about their performance today? Yeah, we, we knew uh, for a couple of days, and I was very proud of those guys, the way they stepped in and really did a good job in the kicking game. Um, you know, Chance was really solid, and, uh, you know, we did a great job in the punt game as well, so it was good. Mark, it almost looked like, at least to me, watching Terry, that was like the 2018 Terry, making the decisions he did, showing the speed he did. Is that a fair observation? or? I, I agree with you. I felt like this was the Terry that, that, you know, I expect him to play each and every week. Again, I think that has a lot to do with the people around him and the coaching and putting him in a position to be successful. But, yes, I thought he played it very well. And, um, you know, he was very efficient. And, and, and let me say, uh, I'm proud of him and the way he responded um, because, you know, that, that position is different. Let, let's just be honest. It is. There's so much scrutiny. There's so much pressure on that position. And you have to play well at that position to be successful. And, um, you know, there's times when it, it all comes down on him and, and, and there's time you said it's deserving and there's times that it's not. Um, but he didn't look for an opportunity to, to run and hide. Um, you know, he took that criticism. He took the coaching um, and he got better. And I really respect the way he responded and the way he came back and played. Now we expect him to do that every week. And, um, you know, that's the standard which we need him to play at and, uh, you know, across the board. 
Harry Gray. to talk about the, the absences of, of Matt and Max, you know, just a reason for, for their absences and other players? I mean, you could probably read between the lines. I mean, I can't comment <laughs> on that. But there, yeah. Just wanted to hear. Yeah. Tony cut you off. Not me. Gary, I cut you off. I'll hear everything else. John Hale. Mark, the SEC announced yesterday that I think until moving forward, until Monday, you might not know who you're going to play on Saturdays for the rest of the season. Just what does that do for preparation and how do you kind of approach these last three weeks? Well, you know, there's things that we're going to do every week and the carryover. We, we do advance scouting on, on our opponents anyway and watch them and cross over and on film. So we'll, we'll make it work. Whatever we have to do, we'll do it. And, uh, you know, that's the approach we've taken all year. I really respect our players and our staff, and they've done a really good job of trying to stay as safe as they can. Um, and, you know, our team is responding, and and we'll show up. We'll be there next Saturday wherever they tell us to play. Larry Mark, is there anything in the next few days you and your team – plan to do for Leanne and the family? And is there anything UK fans can do that you would encourage them to do? Can I comment on that? Or do you, yeah. So yes, um, uh, Leanne and the family um, have a service that'll be private on, on uh, Monday. And then um, there will be a memorial here um, this afternoon or in the afternoon on Monday afternoon. And is that, I mean, it's, it's not open to the public um, for, for the team and for uh, Leanne and her family and alumni, John's friends. John knows so many people. Uh, there's, you know, all ex-players. There's so many people that played with John, that coached with John, all his different stops. Um, so you can imagine uh, there's an awful lot of people that want to come pay their respects to Leanne and to John. And so um, we will do that on Monday. Thank you. Okay, we've got uh, time for two more. Uh, John Clay. And uh, I know Leanne had mentioned to me that John was very close to a lot of your media as well. And so uh, um, I don't want to, I like to stay in my lane, you know that. But I also know that Leanne personally said, um, you know, involved some media, I believe, as well. Maybe not to film everything or anything like that, but just it to, for you to pay your respects as well because I know many of you were close to John. Mark, you talked about the, that it wasn't just Terry. It was the players around Terry. I know you put a lot of uh, emphasis on uh, working on the passing game over the last two weeks. How do you think the receivers did today? I, I thought they did a good job. I really do. And I felt like there was a lot more plays out there. Um, I'm disappointed. We, we, got, we had only 55 plays again, but we did have 458 yards, you know, which is great, um, very explosive. Um, I wish we would have had more opportunities. And, again, that comes back to defense getting off the field and giving us some more opportunities and, and letting those guys have a little bit of fun because they've worked extremely hard. I felt like they, they've been working hard, and I felt like we could, could have continued to be a little more efficient in throwing the ball. But, uh, you know, there, there's also – you know, that fine line, again, uh, winning. And, um, you know, again, that's why I did that with seven and a half minutes left or whatever it was. Normally, we could go right into, to, to, you know, we're, we're as good a four-minute offensive team as most people because we're extremely fish, efficient at running the ball and get creative in sets and can, you know, pound the ball and, and, and use up clock and get some first downs. But, again, I just felt like for the growth of the program, it was important to, to throw the ball around a little bit and, made it a little closer than I wanted to, that's for sure. Bonnie Henry. Excuse me. Mark, uh, a lot of people have, uh, they, they view Chris Rodriguez as an inside runner, a guy that gets the tough yards, does, takes, uh, makes something out of nothing. A lot of times when, when the nothing's there, he's just that kind of, but uh, how pleasing was you with, uh, was to you today to see him break out? Uh, I mean, 
doesn't surprise me. Um, you know, he, uh, we feel like he's a complete back. He gets very tough yards, um, but he also uh, can be explosive. And so it was good for him to get some, some big plays. And our last question from Coach Stoops is Gary Gray. Gary? Hey, Mark, uh, just talk about Chris's performance and, you know, just the way he's running right now, um, you know, just seems to be on a roll right now. Well, I'm just looking at his stats there, and uh, I guess I can't argue with you there. He had 11.5 yards per carry. That's pretty impressive. Um, so, um, you know, I agree that, it's, again, it's not surprising to us. Um, you know, we have great confidence in him. Uh, we have confidence in our other backs. And, uh, you know, again, there's only 55 snaps there, but, you know, we were very explosive for, almost, again, darn near 460 for 55. And I wish we could have got some more. I wish we could have got some more possessions. Um, and that comes down to getting some better stops defensively, certainly in the second half. Okay, folks, thank you very much, Coach Stoops. Thank you for your time. And Claire will be joining you shortly. Let me just say um, I appreciate you. Thank you for – um, reaching out during this difficult time um, to myself, to Leanne, and the family. Um, you guys have done a remarkable job of covering John and, and honoring him, and we appreciate it. And I know Leanne does, and uh, uh, just wanted to say thank you. All right, everybody, good afternoon. We've got Terry Wilson here. Start you off with the players, raise hands, and we'll get the questions. All right, Terry. No, we're good. John Clay. Uh, Terry, when did you feel like that you were getting healthy and ready to play? And just talk about your performance today. Um, yeah, um, you know, my wrist, you know, it was pretty banged up. And, you know, at that time, I couldn't really follow through with my throws. And, I, you know, it just didn't feel really good. And, you know, so I was just, you know, rehabbing it and getting it treated. Um, and during that bye week, you know, that, that bye week was really special, um, you know, especially for the guys that were kind of dinged up, you know, to get some, you know, some treatment and heal up. But, you know, through that, that bye week, you know, I feel like as a team, we got better um, and improved. Um, so, you know, I feel like going into this game, you know, our, we knew, you know, who we were, who we were playing for, you know, which was Coach Slarman and, you know, and Chris Oates. And, you know, I, I feel like the guys were motivated. So we just knew we had to go out there and execute. Larry. Did you say me, Matt? Yeah. Okay, man. I, I can barely hear you there. So, but Terry, it just felt like watching you today that you kind of looked like 2018 Terry. That you kind of just were back, cutting loose, instinctive, just you being you. I mean, am I wrong thinking that? Uh, not at all. Um, you know, and I I just feel like you know uh, I was out there playing football. Um, you know, just trying to take care of the football, uh, making the right reads. You know, being decisive on my reads and you know, just going out there and try to make plays for my football team, for the, for the team. So, uh, I mean, it's safe for you to say that. Josh Moore. Hey, Terry, the, the, you looked very – you were very efficient out there today. And the one time you had eight or nine you know, straight passes there completed. Do you – when you kind of get in that zone, do you feel that? Do you, do you kind of notice that? Or is that something you don't really pick up on until after when you're looking at the box score or whatever? What was that? I didn't, I didn't hear that yes, last part. Did, did you, in, in the middle of it, did you realize that you were locked in and that you had played like 10 of 11 mm -hmm. or whatever it was? Um, you know, while you're playing, I mean, it's not like you're really thinking of it, uh, you know, as like I'm 10 of 11. Um, it's really just, you know, trying to get the ball to the receivers, trying to, you know, be efficient and just trying to, you know, make plays. Um, but once you're in that, once you're in that mood, I mean, you got your rhythm together and, 
you're just trying to make plays out there. You're just trying to do what you can do to help the team. So I, I wouldn't really say that, you know, it's something that I, you know, was just, you know, wanting to do. You know, it's just something that, you know, I'm going out there and, and just trying to make plays at the end of the day. Mark Story. Mark, we can't hear you, buddy. <laughs> All right, Mark, we're going to come back to you. John Hale. Terry, just what have the last few weeks been like for you? There was so much speculation when you were injured and then missing the Georgia game and the bye week. Just what have you gone through over these last few weeks? You know, first of all, it's really just trying to get back healthy. Um, you know, like I said, with my wrist, um, you know, it kind of limited me, you know, I couldn't throw, um, you know, so I just, you know, I had to sit out, you know, a couple of, couple of practices. Um, but once that started getting better, you know, just starting to get back in the groove, groove of things and, you know, just looking on the things that we can improve, uh, improve in and the things that I can do better, um, to be able to go out and win a football game and, and continue to win football games. So, uh, just really just, you know, just locking down and, 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 honing in on what we have to do and what I have to do to help the team. Lonnie. Terry, um, you played a nice game today, but walk, walk me through that particular play that uh, happened between you and Rose when it was a deep pass in the corner down there. Uh, walk me through that, what happened, you know, describe that. Yeah, yeah that's, that, I mean, that's something. I, you know, I saw you grab your head and all that, you know, go ahead. <laughs> But yeah, that's something, you know, I threw it and, you know, I thought it was the perfect pass, but, you know, it came up short. You know, I just had to put some more on it. And it's just something that, you know, I, I wish I could get back. But, you know, now I know the next time we do call that play, you know, I got to let it let it eat and let AJ go get it. So, you know, that, that's one of those plays that you look at and you just like, ah, you know, you don't want that happening. So um, just got to correct it. Alright guys, we got Damon Davis here too, so we got time for one or two more for Terry if you got one. Mark, are you, you good now? So Terry, the offensive line, what were you seeing from them before the game? Could you tell, you know, were, did they just seem more intense? I mean, what were they like during the game? Were they more locked in? Could you feel their emotion? Oh yeah. Um, you know, Coach Slarman would want those guys to go out there and, and, and do what they do, you know, and you know, he wouldn't want them to be, you know, pouting around and, you know, feeling sorry. I mean, you know, that's just the guy Coach Slarman was. You know, he, he's, he's a tough dude. And so, you know, he wants his players to be tough. And, you know, our O-line, they went out there and executed and, you know, did what they were supposed to do. And, I mean, you know, th those guys, you know, they mean so much to me because, you know, just seeing how much they work and, you know, seeing, you know, this, this week was tough for us. And just seeing how they responded, um, I mean, you know, those guys really give it their all, you know, each week, um, every game. So, you know, we just got to keep, you know, keep working um, and get ready for next week. All right, final one for Terry, John Hale. What was that first play like, Terry, when you all took the delay a game, you know, and left the empty spot for Coach Slarman? Just what were the emotions like there? I mean, yeah, it, it was emotional. Um, you know, it's – this game was to honor Coach Slarman, you know, and like I said, I mean, it's been a tough week for us all, um, you know, but, and, you know, we all have heavy hearts for his family, you know, his wife, um, you know, we just wanted to go out there and honor him uh, before the game even started, really, and, you know, just show our respect. All right, guys, we got a couple players here, so we'll be right back with you. We just five consecutive games of double digit tackles. Oh, I didn't even know that. He's the first since Danny Trevathan. Tony will have that in our post game notes. Raise hands, we'll get to questions. John Hale. I mean, can you just talk about the emotion in the locker room today? Obviously, you all have been through a lot all year with Chris and then now Coach Slarman. Just, just what was it like and how important was it to come out with the win today? 
Um, definitely, uh, not only today, just this week in general, it was extremely tough for us as a team and um, losing a guy like Coach Slarm, it was really, un, I don't know, it was just, it was really rough all week. And uh, we just knew we had to come out and do what we had to do on both sides of the ball. And yeah, we can clean up a few things on defense, but we still came out with the win, so. Josh Moore. Damon, what, what, where do you think some of those, you know, especially like the third and longs and some of those, you know, conversions there for them, what, what is that originating from? It seems like, you know, it seems like it's it, it just, if the offense is clicking, the defense kind of sometimes has some hiccups and, and vice versa. When you guys are really rolling, it seems like the offense, is there, is there something mental there that's that's not connecting with the units or? Uh. I mean, honestly, it's, in general, it's just something that we just got to clean up, honestly, going forward. Um, it's, it's, it's always um, easy to just point the fingers at offense and defense and whatnot, but as a team, we just always going to stay together and do what we got to do moving forward. So, Anybody else? Don't be shy. Josh, go ahead. Was it tough uh, with, with DeAndre kind of available but not out there most of the game? What was that, you know, going out there with Quez, how was it different? Um, he, he did a good job answering the call. It was a little different, but, I mean, at the same time, I just tried to make sure I focused enough to play my game and be ready for whatever I had to do, whether it was playing Mike or Will. So, um, yeah, it, it's still some things to clean up on, on the film and, and – going forward, just making sure we um, exact with everything going forward and uh, just being ready to answer the call, honestly, so, yeah. John Clay. Damon, I know the schedule's a little bit in flux, but if you still end up playing Alabama and Florida the next two weeks, obviously those are really tough games, but how much are you guys looking forward to playing those games? Um, <laughs> we, we look at it just like anybody else on the schedule. Is it, We don't worry about anything, like, like I said before, we don't never pay attention to outside noise and whatnot. We just prepare the same way we pre prepare for anybody else and do what we got to do to come out the right way, so. All right, Josh, we've got Chris Rodriguez here too. We'll get him on in just a second. All right, we've got Chris Rodriguez. He joined the 1,000 yard career club today, career high rushing yards and career long <coughs> rushing yards today. Strong. We'll uh, get some questions. Just raise your hand. Chris, do you have a message? I'm saying that stuff is strong. <laughs> what you just sprayed. I'm awake. John Clay. Chris, you're supposed to be the guy who runs between the tackles and gets those tough yards. How did it feel on that 74 yard run? Listen, I'm just here so I don't get fined. <laughs> now nah, I'm messing with you. Uh, you know, it felt good. I mean, just, I mean, I don't treat any run different. You know, I run inside, run outside, but I mean, I prefer it inside, but you know, that 74 yard, I mean, it was, I mean, obviously it's fun for me. You know, I never thought like really I'm as fast as I really think I am, but you know, it was, I mean, I, it was fun. John Hale. Chris, did you sense some added emotion from those offensive linemen in particular today with everything going on with Coach Slarman this week? Uh, yeah, you know, it, and it's, I, I feel like it was hard for those guys all week, you know. As soon as they figured it out, like I can see it in their face. The, day, the next day we walked into um, into meetings and stuff, and, you know, Coach Stoops had a couple words for us, uh, showed us a video, a video that we made. And, uh, like, you can just see it in their face, like, they're really sad, but also today you saw in their face that they wanted to come out and win and play harder than they ever had before to honor him. Larry? Chris, just wondering, obviously you talk about the close relationship that Coach Sarman had with the linemen, but as a running back, I mean, you're, you're around him a lot. Also, just kind of what's your – memories and your thoughts about coach Schlarmer? Uh, so before, like I really started playing for real, um, coach Schlarmer would always come up to me like, yeah, hey, run it, run an MF over, run, you know, do this. And I'm like, 
I really like that. And then, like, coming to practice, seeing, like, he's, like, he's hurting. Basically, you can just see it in his face or whatever. And you're, like, you can only think, like, man, like, he's out here and to see what he's going through. And I sometimes, like, I go to practice and I'm just, like, I don't really want to be here. But then you look at that man and you see what he's going through. And every day he, he was there, like, it was strong. Like, I – I just felt like he was just a strong human being or whatever. And he really taught me a lot. Last call. All right. Young. I'll sauce down so my head don't get chopped off. <laughs> we got people for that. <laughs> Carol Bird. Yes, Landon, if you could walk us through when you're standing there on the sideline waiting to go in on the very first play of the game when the hole is left in the offensive line for John Schlerman's spot, what's going through your mind? What are the emotions as you're trotting out there to take your position? Uh the most emotions that just go through my mind is, you know, we, we lost a, a member of our family and uh, more than a member of our family, but we lost our, our coach and someone that was basically a father figure to every single offensive lineman that's come through this uh, program. Um, so we're going to try to honor him any way we can because of just the impact and the influence that he had on all our lives. Um, one of the toughest, greatest men I've ever had the chance to meet in my life. And, uh, you know, like I said, we left the spot out there because we're missing missing one of our Wildcats today. Um, and another thing, just being able to have the opportunity to wear his number was uh, even – it so, shows that there's so much bigger than football. It was a blessing for me. It was a blessing that uh, he allowed us to do that before he passed away um, and a blessing that his family still, still wanted to do it, that they were there and, and they could see that. You know, I want to go out there and play my game elite anyways, but be able to do it for a little extra reason in that day with, it, with having that number on me. Do you have any idea whose who's idea it was to do that at the start of the game? Yes. Uh, so I know it was it was sort of a cumulative effort. Um, I know that the coaches, they definitely wanted to go ahead and take the penalty, have a moment of silence sort of for coach and, you know, show that we were missing a Wildcat. Um, we we actually decided right before in the pregame to sort of bump Luke out to tackle for that very first play so that um, Coach Sarman was a guard, you know, when he played here. And I know he's always a guard at heart. And so we wanted to leave that spot open to, to show where he played and, uh, you know, represent that number well. John Hale. Landon, given everything you all have gone through this week, I think, anybody would have forgiven you for not wanting to play or to, you know, have that emotion hanging over you. Just what were the last 48 hours like and those discussions about how you wanted to honor coach by playing so well today? Um, it was definitely hard. Um, and it doesn't get any easier talking about it. Um, but, you know, we wanted to make sure that we did what he wanted us to do uh, every single day. And I know he's sitting down up there watching us right now and, um, you know, having a, the, the mentality and the grit that he had, he would not want us to sit down and feel sorry for ourselves for one second. The man never did it himself, even though he was pumping drugs into his body. And if for goodness sakes, came out to practice not just hours after he had his first surgery there a couple of weeks ago. And um, the last thing that he would want us to do is sit back, feel sorry for ourselves and, and you know, miss a game or miss practice or not be able to do this or that. Um, just that's his, his mentality. He's a tough man, and, and he loved his game of football. And uh, at the end of the day, you know, on, on one of the last sort of conversations they had for me, they said, you know, Coach Sarman, why why do you do this? You know, why do you still come out? Why do you come out after surgery? Why do you, you know, bring such this effort and this attitude and everything? And his simple answer was for the team. And, uh, you know, you can't have a much better answer than that. Uh, yeah, that's truly committed to the game of football and the guy that's truly committed to each and every soul that's out on that field. And what is best for us has grown us as men and being able to further further us as a football player and have the best opportunity we can out there. Jeff Drummond. Hey, Landon, can you uh, speak a little bit about, uh, you know, your relationship with Coach Slarman went back uh, a long time. You, you had committed to Kentucky early 
and you had known him probably since you were, I think, freshman in high school, something like that. Uh, just talk about the, the formation of that relationship and how he's, you know, been such a big part of your life for a, a great part of it. Yeah, so uh, he was actually not the, the person who originally kicked off my recruitment my freshman year, but he ended up taking it over almost immediately when I started coming to camps. Um, and and uh, so they recruited me, recruited me. I went to camps, uh, a couple of overnight camps, a couple of day camps and everything. And with that, we started our relationship there. And like I said, this is, this is year eight that we had, that we had been around each other. And, you know, that's a, that's a lot when you talk about a, co a college coach and a, and a recruit, you know, most guys have a, have a chance to have a relationship with those guys for, you know, four, maybe five years, six at the most. And uh, for me to be able to sort of start that relationship early, I always knew I wanted to play under Coach Sarman just because of the man he was. You got the same guy on the field as you got off the field. And uh, he, he – day one, when when I he started recruiting me, he sort of took me under his wing. And he wanted me to feel comfortable under him. He wanted to make sure that he was sort of a father figure and the importance over football was developing me and as a man, developing me in my faith, developing me in my character. And um, – as I, th I think he's done a, a dang good job of it. And, you know, uh, as time goes on, we've created an even tighter, tighter relationship. You know, all the hours that we put in together through camp, all the Sundays, you know, everybody's off and, you know, I'm sitting there in his office and we're watching film or, you know, a bunch of the senior linemen are in there watching film. Uh, we've been through good years. We've been through bad years. But, um, you know, mainly we've been able to change this program. And I think a lot of it is due to him. And uh, the way that he's been able to bring our offensive line together, bring our team together, he's one guy that you can ask anybody on this team that no matter who it is, no matter what position you are, everybody loved Coach Sarman. He was just a guy that you could get along with. He was a, he was a tough guy, and he always brought the attitude. He always brought the mentality. Um, but, again, we've, we've just been able to keep a really tight relationship. You know, we, we know when to cut up and we know when to be serious. And uh, up until his, you know, last days, he was still coaching us. We had a chance to go see Coach Sarman, um, I reckon, about a week before he passed away, uh, me, DK, Drake, and Luke. And, um, you know, I knew it was getting pretty bad at that point. But still, when we walked in there, he's just talking nothing about – nothing but football, saying, man, you all really got him after him at Georgia. He said, you know, keep your heads high, keep swinging. He was texting all of us saying, man, I love you. I miss you. I wish I was out there, and I'm sorry that I'm not. And for a man that's going through everything that he is – and say, I'm sorry for not being there. You know, it hits hard. That man gave everything he had to this game. And uh, I couldn't ask for a better coach to be able to spend that my last eight years with. Now we got two more. Larry? Yeah, yeah Landon, I appreciate what you just said about Coach. I don't know what he meant to you. You always talk about him as a, as a tough guy. But on the other hand, there's a pretty soft, lovable, gentle side of John, too. Could, could you just talk maybe just a few examples of some of that also? Uh, you can start off with, you know, how he treats his kids and how he puts them as a priority. He puts his faith as a priority first, and then it's his family. And that's something that he was always talking about was his kids. And we, when we were able to, uh, you know, go over to his house, you could see what a priority his family was and that he loved every single one of them with every inch of his heart. Something else is just the way he loved every single one of us. Uh, you know, he was vulnerable when, uh, with us when he needed to be vulnerable. But I think that was that was sort sort of something that made us so close is that he wasn't always the the tough go get him. Like he was he was able to show emotion when he wanted to show emotion. He was able to show different different sides of himself that made us respect him more as a coach. And, you know, even if that was, you know, he, he didn't want anybody else on the team to be able to see what he was going through and the struggles that he was going through, how much he was really hurting. But, you know, me, Drake, and, you know, some of the older guys, he really was able to sit down with us and sort of open up on one-on-ones and just, you know, be able to really learn what he's going through. Like, one of the last drugs he was on made it to where he could hardly walk. And uh, he had made the bottoms of his feet almost completely blistered. And – but he was still going out there every single day and, and racing us to drills when he could. He was making sure that he was, he was showing that effort, even though he could have been at home resting. Um, so, you know, that's sort of that, that sort of soft, sensitive side that he, he showed us that emotion. He showed us that it's okay for things to go bad in life. It's just 90, it's 10% of what happens to you and 90% of how you react. 
and that's a that's a a, a face for that model you know he he 100 percent thought that life was 10 percent, and that's how he acted it was 90 percent of how he reacted to what the situation got put into his life about. All right, we'll wrap up with uh, Mark's story. John have taken special pride in this particular game because you basically played the whole game without your starting guards and, and guys, you know, came off the bench and stepped up. Absolutely. That was uh you know, he, he was definitely looking down on us. And, yeah, we had a bunch of guys on the on the team that want to fight for him as well. And some guys, he, he, he taught us from day one. And when you're a freshman and you come in, one thing that he always told us is that one day your number is going to get called and you do not know when it is. And he tried to correlate that to life and he got to correlate that to football. You know, freshman year when I was in the swamp, I had no clue that I was going to be end up getting thrown in as a freshman down there. But my number got called and I had to step up to it. Same thing with Coach Sarman in his life. He didn't know when his number was going to be called to come come to heaven and go see our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. But his number was called, and he was ready. And his soul was ready. His heart was ready. And, uh, it's you know, it's selfish for us. We, we want him down here. But uh, he's not suffering, and, uh, and, and uh, he left a great legacy around here. But uh, I was really proud of uh, Quentin Wilson. Uh, Quentin came in and uh, – right after the first play there and was able to play a really, really good game. I was really proud of him, especially being able to move from center to guard and uh, not really playing the guard position uh, before, even through the time he's been here, but really came out there and was a, uh, a very dominant force on the offensive line. I felt like he had really good movement, had really good plays. Um, but again, I think there's a, a line of guys behind us that are, that are ready to do that. And they want that chance to be able to go out there and uh, show Coach Sarman looking down on them that, you know, he did a good job coaching us and that, that you know, this is the reason that they're going to be able to do what they're going to do. Um, but, again, I'm really proud of those young guys, and I, I think it, it really gives us a, a bright a look into the future of what this offensive line is going to be. All right, everybody, we appreciate it. We'll uh, see you on Monday for Coach Stoops' uh, normal. Thank you, everybody, and God bless you.